I'm Pastor Lee, and this is Pastor Sinead, my wife, and we're so glad that you're here to spend New Year's Eve with us. Aren't y'all glad? There really is no better place to be than in the house of God as the year goes out and as we bring in the new year. And I wanted to take a few minutes tonight. Tonight, tonight is going to be a night of celebrating. We're going to have some dancing. We're going to have some singing. But, but mostly, it's about you leaving with Thanksgiving 2015. And you entering 2016 with expectation of the great things that God has in store for you. And I assure you, I assure you that God has so many great things in store for you. And it really is a simple thing. And tonight I wanted to take a few minutes because we're a church, we're a teaching church, a word church, a praising kind of church. Let me, let me ask this first. How many of y'all are here for the first time? You've never been in Destiny's Doors before. Let me see you. Stand up on your feet. We're just going to celebrate you. We just want to celebrate you. Come on, make some noise for yeah. God bless all y'all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. And tonight is a night where we're just, we want to celebrate. And many people who come here don't understand why that we're so excited all the time, why we smile all the time. And, you know, Jolie Osteen, who's one of our good friends, said, Lee, I think you smile more than I do all the time. But we found out a secret about the favor of God. And we found out that you get out of life what you expect yeah. and not what you deserve. Yeah. And if you you'll expect promotion, if you'll expect goodness, if you'll expect healing, if you'll expect that promotion, God will not disappoint you. Amen. So tonight we're going to sing, we're going to praise, we're going to shout, but I wanted to get in the word, just show you why we do it. I love to, if you, if you understand the why, the why you're alive, you'll understand that you have a great life in store for you. If you understand why we come to church, if you understand why we want to celebrate, why we praise, why we stand on our feet and lift our hands and and you see tears falling down on people's face if you understand what it does for you and what God has hidden in the secrets of praise and worship you'll may, maybe be able to participate and just relax do y'all know that God is chasing you with grace and favor Woo! some people don't know that some Shanae, some people don't know that God is not mad at them but he's madly in love madly with in love with you God's madly in love with you and tonight before you leave I'm telling you you're going to be an expectation of promotion of increase that song says it God's faith his grace is chasing, chasing you, you down. down God's grace and you can expect it everywhere you turn if you'll expect the grace and favor of God you'll begin to see it in ways that you never ever imagined Amen. I don't know if she's here tonight, but we got uh, this this week. We were on uh, eating breakfast together, yeah. and my phone uh, got an in, uh, inbox mm -hmm. inbox on Amen. Facebook, and somebody Facebooked us and said, "Hey, we were in the uh, we had they had a baby on Christmas morning. Uh, I think her name is Kay Shonda. I'm not sure if she's here. She hit me up, and we wanted to pray for her. If Kay Shonda is here, just stand up if you're here. I wasn't sure she was able to get here, but the doctors had told her that her baby would not live in her womb." It was diagnosed with some kind of disease and they said, uh, your baby, will, you won't be able to carry the baby past seven months. Well, she carried the baby the full nine months. <laughs> delivered the baby on Christmas, Christmas morning. Day. The doctors told her, please, this baby is not going to live two hours. Today I talked to her. She said, Pastor, the baby is fine. Is she here today? No. Okay. She said, the baby is fine. I said, well, if you're able to come to church, she says, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get the baby out of the house. But let's, can we just agree? We've been learning that God wants every human being healed. God wants you healed. He died for your sins. And the Bible says, by his stripes, we were healed. And it's your right as a believer to be, your, be healed. It's your right as a believer to be abundantly blessed. And so her name is Kay Shonda, and her baby's name is Champion. <laughs> That's calling those things that be not as though they are. She called. So can y'all grab the hand of the person next to you? I, I, I promised I wanted to pray for her and her baby. And let's just declare healing today. Let's declare he will live and not die. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, we speak over champion and we call him healed. We curse any sickness. We command every
every cell, every vein, every, every artery, every muscle, every internal organ. His blood be healed. You will live and not die. We declare the life of God and we celebrate now his life, an abundant, long-lived, full life in the name of Jesus. If you're in agreement with that, give God the biggest shout of praise you've given him all day today. He will live. Hallelujah. Do y'all mind if I just take a minute? I want to show you because it's so important and the scriptures show time and time again how important it is to praise God. Even when your situation looks completely negative, and I want to say particularly when it looks really, really negative. Peyton, perhaps in 2015 you had a rough year and maybe you lost your job, maybe you lost a loved one, but I'm telling you, if you'll learn this principle of praise, the Bible says in Psalms 22 and 3, it says that God inhabits the praises of his people. He dwells in and lives in praise. And so, and the Bible lets us know that the atmosphere of heaven is praise. There's angels around the throne room of God right now praising him. And when you begin to lift your hands and lift your voice in praise, you create that same heavenly atmosphere wherever you are. And whenever you want to bring God's goodness, his favor on the scene, it starts with a praise. Can I show you it in the scriptures? Do y'all mind? Go, make some noise for my pretty wife. Will y'all praise the Lord? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. My son is down there. Daddy! Yes, yes, yes. Now, look, in, in the Bible, in Second Chronicles, can I just, get, get, y'all relax a minute? We're going to praise again, but this will, this will really empower you. Watch this. It happened, I'm reading in Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 1. It says, it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to pa battle against Jehoshaphat the king of Judah then some came and told Joseph Jehoshaphat Jehoshaphat the, the Judah they're the people of God they're, and when you read in the Old Testament about Israel and the people of God it's a picture it's a type and a shadow of the people of God in the New Testament so it's a picture of the body of Christ are y'all with me then some came and told the king Jehoshaphat saying a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea from Syria and they are a in ha Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. So the Bible is telling us the people of God were being attacked by enemies on every side. Armies had come, the, the Ammonites, the Moabites had come against them. These are great, huge armies, enemies. This is like sickness. This is like poverty. This is like cancer. Something that comes against you in a strong way that you in and of yourself don't have the ability to defeat. And on top of that, people came from Syria. Same kind of stuff you're hearing on the news today. And Jehoshaphat, the king, was afraid. He was terrified at this. Just like when you get a negative report about losing your job or a loved one says they're leaving you or something like that. You get bad news. Anybody got any bad news in 2015? Yeah, maybe you saw some bad news. Watch the solution here. Watch. He says, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to do what? To seek the Lord. Listen to me, y'all. Listen to me because this is so important. God is not mad at you. God is, you say, well, God's mad at me because I've missed it and I haven't been to church in years. I haven't been, you know, I haven't done this and I haven't done that. Listen, God isn't mad at you. He took his wrath and anger out for our sins on Jesus. He took it out on, and I'll show you that later on today, tonight. But watch this. Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Here's the key in every situation of your life. God is in love with you and he wants you to seek after him. The Bible says that, that, uh, Without faith, it's impossible to please him. And those that come to God uh, must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Just seeking God. God just wants you to seek after him. Now listen, if I had a dog and I lost my dog and I put up signs all over my neighborhood on the telephone poles and put them in mailboxes that said uh, a reward for finding my lost dog. Please find my lost dog. I'll give you a $100 reward. What if, and if somebody came to our doorbell and rang it and just said, hey, uh, Pastor Lee, I saw you lost your dog. I've been looking for your dog. Could I have that $100 reward? I said, well, where's my dog? They said, well, I didn't find him. I've just been looking for him real good. 
That's what I didn't know good. I need my dog. Here's how awesome God is. God says, if you just diligently seek me, I'll reward you. Say, God's not mad at me. He's madly in love with me. Yeah, yeah. Jehoshaphat, he sought himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. Have you ever had to do it? Just help Jesus. Yeah. They sought out for help. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Like what we're doing tonight, just seeking the Lord, that our 2016 will be more blessed than we ever imagined. Yeah. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We're coming to seek the Lord so that his blessing follows us and chases us and precedes us. Then Jehoshaphat, the king, stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord, right? Like you're doing right now, uh, in the house of the Lord before the, uh, before the new court and said, look what he says. He prays, oh Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations and in your hands? And is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? Watch this. Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? Do you know as a born again believer, the Bible calls you a friend of God? Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. You're a friend of God just because you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. As a friend of God, the Bible says that God wants to reveal to you the secret things. The secrets of how wealth is received, the secrets of how healing is received. God wants to reveal to you his secrets of the abundant life. You say, I'm a friend of God. Yeah, yeah. And he says, and they, and they dwell in it. Here's Jehoshaphat still talking. He says, they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name. Saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, famine. That means broke. That means sick. That means accidents. That means negative stuff. If disaster comes upon us, we will stand before this temple and in your presence for your name is in this temple and cry out to you in our affliction and you will hear and save. Do you know that the Bible says if you'll call upon him, he will hear you and deliver you out of all your troubles? How many of y'all could use some deliverance out of all your troubles? Maybe some financial troubles, some, some relationship troubles, some career troubles. He's here to deliver and to save as you call upon him. Watch this. And now hear the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. He said, you told us not to destroy these people when we came through. And here they are rewarding us for not destroying them by coming to throw us out of your possession which you have given us to inherit. You got to see this. You are the blessed of God. And anytime an enemy rise up, rises up against you to take your health, to take your wealth, to take your family, to take your peace, or to take your joy, you got to know God did not sanction that. Look what he says. Oh, our God, you will not, will you not judge them? Do you know this? Any enemy that rises up against you, the, the Bible says God will judge them. For we have no, watch this, for we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. <laughs> do you know if God is for you, that's more than the world against you? And the Bible said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Not famine, not pestilence, not disease, not lack, not any sickness. Nothing can defeat you when God is for you. Say, God is for me. God is for me. He's for you in 2015 and he's for you in 2016. The key is knowing it. 
The Bible says my people are destroyed, not for a lack of shouting, not for a lack of praising, but for a lack of knowledge. It's what we don't know about what God has provided for us that keeps us from it. Watch what the king says. He says, now all Judah with their little ones, their children, their wives, and their children stood before the Lord. That's one of the reasons we stand. We stand and praise. Now, if you're tired and you can't stand, that's all right. You know what I'm saying. But he says, then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, Benaniah, or whatever his name is, and the son of Jael, and the son of Mantanah. Just goes through his whole lineage. A Levite, the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the, of the assembly, a prophet stands up and speaks. And he said, Listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord God to you, Lord to you, do not be afraid nor be dismayed because of this great, uh, this great multitude. And this is the word of the Lord for you. Don't be afraid. Don't panic about the enemies that come against you. Don't panic about a negative doctor's report. Don't panic about a losing of a job. Don't panic about somebody who says, I don't love you anymore. Are y'all listening to me? Watch what the Bible says. He says, uh, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Oh, y'all ain't listening. <laughs> God says, you ain't going to have to fight this. They came against you. That means they came against me. Anybody that comes against you just came against your God. You don't have to fight them. When the children of Israel were, were escaping out of Egypt, out of slavery and bondage, and they caught between two mountains and, a, and the Red Sea before them, and the people panicked because the armies of Pharaoh were coming after them with swords. They didn't want to play spades. They wanted to kill them. So they came up against them and they started panicking. The people feared. And God fussed at Moses and said, why are you even calling on me? He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Do you know that word salvation in the Hebrew is Yahweh? The word Yahweh in, in English means Jesus. Jesus' name means Savior. It means salvation. It means healing. God named Jesus healing, deliverance, Savior. Moses said, stand still and see my Savior. That's what we're going to do tonight. Stand still and see his salvation power. Watch this. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz. And you will, not fi you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jer Jeruel. The wilderness. He said, you'll go to the end of this, this wilderness. And it, a wilderness always represents a dark place in life. Remember the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And it's a, it's a time where God began to try to bring some of the junk out of them. So he could show him himself. Show him that he was in love with them. So he said, go down to this wilderness. They were terrified, y'all. They were terrified at what they were about to face. You will not need to fight in this battle. Watch this. Position yourselves, stand still, and see Yahweh. Here it is again. Stand still and see salvation. See Jesus of the Lord, whom is with you. Say, God is with me. Yeah. Oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. I want you to know this year, 2016, God is with you. He's for you. He's fighting for you. He's opening up opportunities for you, and the key is seeking him. I declare this will be your year of receiving all the blessings and promises of God. If it's a healing you need, this will be your year to receive it. How many of you could use some promotion at work? This is your year to receive it. Watch how it happened. Jo and Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord. Doing what? 
worshiping him. Watch this. And the Levites of the children of, of Kohath, the Kohathites and the children of Kohathites stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with voices loud and high. So they're praising. They're just standing there getting ready to go to battle, but they start praising and worshiping before they go to the battle. Watch this. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. Uh, and as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Listen to me. If you believe what I'm saying today, if you'll believe what I'm telling you, that God's not mad at you, he's for you and he will prosper you. If you'll believe that, if you'll believe that, you're going to prosper. You're going to be established in health. You're going to be established in the destiny that God's called you to be, to do, and to have. The rest of your life will be the best of your life. I declare, if you'll believe what I'm sharing with you today about the goodness of God, you'll fall so in love with him because he's in love with you. Watch this. And when he had, when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before or in front of the army. Whoa! Now think about this. If, if, if President Obama, who is in charge of all the militaries of the United States, sent our armies out to Syria and to Iraq and all, all these nations in the Middle East, but then he just sent our kids out with tambourines, band, instruments in front of the tanks, in front of the foot soldiers, in front of them. We would be so mad. Isn't that right? We'd be, because that sounds like a ridiculous plan. How are you going to send my 20 year old in front of the army with the tanks to be shot down by the enemy? That's what this sounded like. But watch what God's plan is. And when they had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Say it with me. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures Say it again. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures that's what these people did in front of all the people with swords and with arrows. They went out just beginning to sing and to worship. Are y'all listening? To me? Now, when they began, now when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. When the people began to sing and to praise, the Lord defeated all of their enemies, all of their sickness, all of their disease, all of their, their poverty, all of their lack, all their mental illness, all of their illnesses were fixed as they began to praise and worship. That ought to make somebody excited right there. Watch this. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. All of the enemies started fighting each other. Cancer cells started killing cancer cells. Are y'all listening to me? Watch this. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, remember, the valley of Tekoa, they looked toward the multitude and there were dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. All of their enemies had killed each other. Now that's, come on, that's a good place to give God praise right there. Now these stories are in the Bible, not for our entertainment. They're to teach us how to defeat every enemy in our life. Are y'all with me? Watch this. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies. Now that last verse seems like it could be the end of the story, but it isn't. God doesn't want you just having victory. He wants you having super abundance in your victory. 
Look what God did to all the enemies. He had them wear all their finest jewels, drive, come to the battle, because they just knew they were going to defeat the Israelites, all, the Jew, all, of, all, the, all of Judah. So they brought all their stuff, thinking they were going to take over their territory. So they brought all their fine stuff, their best stuff. Now they're all laying there dead with all this wealth laying there. Watch what the Bible says. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. I declare... If you'll make praise... A lifestyle if you'll make Thanksgiving a way of life now regardless how bad your situation looks I'm telling you I could show you two or three people in this building right now that would trade places with you you say pastor I'm so tired of my kids there's somebody in here believing God for kids pastor I can't stand my job there's somebody that would take it off your hands right now Pastor, I can't stand my spouse. Look down the road. Somebody will take him off your hands. Trust me. Smile at the person next to you and say, it's good to sit next to you. It's good to sit next to you. Come on. Watch this. On the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Baraka. Barak. Baraka. That word Barak, you heard that name before? Baraka, Baraka, it means blessing. For there they, the, they blessed the Lord, therefore the name of the place was, uh, was called the Valley of Baraka until this, the place that was called the Wilderness of Tekoa, they renamed it, the, the, back up, where is it? The Valley of Baraka. The valley of blessing, the place that ended up being the worst, looked like the worst devastation in their life, turned out being the greatest blessing in their life. I'm telling you right now, how many of y'all had some challenge in 2015? Will you believe with me that that thing is going to turn around for your good? If you'll let the door close on 2015, God will bring you new opportunities in 2016. God's going to bring you new favor. Don't be mad about somebody that left your life. Kiss him goodbye. Mwah. So God can bring in the new. Are y'all listening to me? Then they returned every man to Judah and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat in front of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy for the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. Next. So they came to Jerusalem with, the, with stringed instruments. Now they're carrying guitars. They got basses they got, and harps and trumpets to the house of the Lord. They, they left that battle and went straight to church. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, if you learn this principle that I'm sharing with you today and, and execute this in 2016, this place will look like this every service. Why? Because you'll want to be here thanking the, thanking the Lord for what he's turned around in your life. How many of you see some things right now? Come on. I want you to right now get up on your feet. My band and singers can come on out. I want you to get up on your feet. Listen. We used to have you come and bring three things that you wanted God to do. I want you to think of three things that you want to thank him for, for 2015. That that sickness didn't take you out. That that, that job didn't take you out. That it, nothing took it, that accident that could have taken you out didn't. Are y'all listening to me? Slap somebody a high five and say, 2016 is going to be better than 2015. fear of the Lord was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. God is your victor. 